Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. So let's take a look at the Knight's deck. So we got a 6 mana 5-5 five, five Vigilance Menace. Alright, so whenever an equipment or an equipped creature we control attacks, draw a card and lose a life. That sounds okay. And then equipment we control have equip knight zero. So we can move around equipment freely on our knights. So seems like a powerful commander, six mana, of course, pretty expensive. So we already want to have a bunch of knights and equipment in play. So you can attack and start drawing cards right away. And even got a Colossus Hammer in here that we can equip for free for the plus one plus ten. That's pretty spicy. So, um, I guess we'll start by looking at all the equipment. So we've got Colossus Hammer, we've got Marauder's Axe. This is not an equipment. So this is kind of the new signet that every commander deck will play from now on. For eternity, basically. Got some colored equipment here, Mask of Immolation, the Crystal Slipper, a new addition, plus one plus oh, and haste. That's pretty good. We've got the Lance, plus two plus two, only costs one mana to equip a knight. So that's pretty strong. Uh, Shining Armor. Can play that at instant speed, giving plus O plus 2. And can put it on a knight for free when it enters the battlefield. We've got the Ancestral Blade, which is also a good one. So we've got some powerful equipment. Um, what else? We've got the Icon of Ancestry, of course, naming knights. <laughs> Random Shivan Dragon. I guess I uh, gotta have some dragons to go with the knights. Mace of the Valiant. Three mana, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each charge counter on the mace. And has vigilance. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield, put a charge counter on it. So this is a little bit slow to get going. But over the course of a longer game, it can become quite powerful. So that's an interesting one. Let's take a look at our creatures here at one mana. We've got the Venerable Knight, 1 mana for a 2-1. When it dies, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target knight you control. Alright, not bad for 1 drop. We've got the Foulmire Knight, one of the new, how do we call these, adventure creatures. So the way these adventures work, for those that don't know, it's basically just a normal creature that you can cast from your hand, in this case a 1 mana 1-1 one, one death touch. But from your hand you can also Instead of casting it as a creature, you can cast this as an adventure, which in this case is an instant for 3 mana that says you draw a card and you lose one life. And once you resolve the adventure, if it doesn't get countered, the card goes to exile, and then from exile you can still cast the Falmire Knight for single black mana and get the 1-1 one, one Death Touch creature. So you basically get a bit more value if you cast the adventure first, but once you cast a creature you can no longer cast the adventure. So, pretty interesting take on Kind of the kicker mechanic and split cards, I guess. Pretty flavorful as well, so hopefully we'll see more cool cards like this. Then I've got, of course, Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is probably the best one drop. Then at two, looks like we've got a ton of action here. Order of the Midnight, another adventure creature, two mana, two, two with flying, cannot block. And the adventure, Alter Fate, Sorcery, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, pretty good value if you can cast both halves. Smitten Swordmaster, 2 mana for a 2 1 lifelink. We can curry favor first, where we gain X life and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights we control. Then we've got Embereth Shieldbreaker, 2 mana 2 1, and can destroy an artifact. Alright, so I mean, 2 mana 2 1, not exciting, but if you get to kill something with it, it's quite strong. Corpse Knight, 2 mana 2 2, we know that one. Wintermore Commander, 2 mana 2-0 two oh, with Death Touch, and its toughness is equal to the number of knights we control, hopefully at least one, in the case of the commander itself. And when the commander attacks, another target knight you control gains indestructible until end of turn. Alright, so pretty interesting spin on kind of the knights matter, instead of pumping power, pumping toughness. Inspiring Veteran, this is more the classic anthem effect, 2 mana 2-2, two two, other knights get plus 1 plus 1, pretty strong. And then Sky Knight Vanguard from M20. Make soldier tokens, not knight tokens, sadly. And then we've got all the equipment we've seen. A D Spark as removal. And then at 3. 
Bell of the Brawl, pretty thematic. 3 mana, 3 2 with menace. When she attacks other knights, we control get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Pretty decent. Midnight Reaper, of course, a fan favorite. Sky Knight Legionnaire, a Boros represent. Tajik, it's gotta be pretty decent, although not a knight, sadly, just a human soldier. Cut the mace. Cruelty as removal. Knight's charge. This is an interesting one too. Whenever a knight we control attacks, each opponent loses one and we gain one. And for 8 mana, so this is pretty pricey, we get to sacrifice it and return all knights from our graveyard to the battlefield, so pretty interesting card. Could be strong, of course, if you get to activate the ability. Could maybe help you get those last points of damage in if there's too many blockers out. We've got Mortify as more removal. The Icon. Fireborn Knight. 4 mana for a 2-3 double strike. So plays quite well with equipment and you can pump it for 4 mana, giving it plus 1 plus 1. So it could be pretty scary, especially combined with equipment. Imagine putting a Colossus Hammer on it. Have a 12-13 with double strike attacking. We've got Integrity Intervention as a nice little split card, pump spell or removal spell. We've got Sir Conrad as the Grim, 5 mana 5 4. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad is gonna get angry and deal 1 damage to each opponent. So keep careful watch of the graveyards and everything that uh, passes through it. And then for 2 mana each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So good way to enable the ability. Alright, so interesting card. Pretty expensive, but could also potentially help you close out the game I guess. And what else? We've got Bond of Discipline as a finisher. Haven't seen this card in action much in the, the draft format. I've maybe seen it cast like once or twice. And then single combat as our sweeper. Each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control and sacrifices the rest. And then players can cast creatures or planeswalker spells until the end of our next turn. And then last but not least, Sheevan Dragon, because why not? And a response resurgence as another removal spell or resurgence to maybe help us close out the game. And then looking at the mana base, of course, Singleton mana base as well. What did they give us? Evolving Wilds, Command Tower, it's a pretty good one. Tournament Grounds, pretty good too in this deck. Then we've got the Gainland. Got a Temple, Guild Gate, no Sacred Foundry, that's unfortunate. But we do get a uh, Godless Shrine, so that's kind of strange. Ragdos Guild Gates, Bloodfell Caves, no Blood Crypts. So the mana base is a bit all over the place. A bunch of different mountains with different arts showcasing the new mountains, I guess. The art looks cool. I like this one. And then the swamps. Got a bit of a theme with uh, glowing lights. Ooh, spooky. And then some planes. All right, I'm digging the, the flavor and the setting. All right, what about this hand? Um, kind of setting up in early turns, no creatures to play early, but an icon, some removal. Don't love it, but I'll probably keep it. Oh, you can take a free mulligan as well. Maybe I should have taken a free mulligan. Got Sir Gwyn hanging out. And we're up against Korvold, 5 mana, 4-4 four, four flyer. I haven't really looked at the other decks, so I have no idea what's incoming here. Alright, so we've got a couple of options. 
think I just want to be mana efficient. I don't really care about killing this quite yet. I guess I only have the single black, so I kind of want to make use of my one black mana as much as I can. I guess I'll play Icon still. If we had double black, I would definitely go Knight plus uh, Lance, but... Hopefully we can top deck a Swamp and then play both and equip. Cryptic Caves. Ooh, Command Tower, that was a good draw. Now I could just activate my Icon instead of playing Lance and Equipping, maybe that's better. Also plays around like a potential damage based or like minus five, minus five type effect from the opponents. We're attacking with the Enforcer. Probably means they have an answer for the Knights. Didn't really care to response resurgence there. That makes sense. I could cruelty the enforcer, which exiles it and they lose a playcrafter, otherwise they're gonna be left with a 1-1 flyer and a playcrafter, which is gonna be kind of difficult to get past. Or I could just activate the icon digging for more creatures. Maybe I should keep this to answer the commander though. Let's just uh, keep the cruelty for Korvald here. Alright, they sack the Playcrafter instead, fair enough. That's a miss. Alright, so things aren't going great, but at least we're hitting our land drops for now. Um, guess I want a main phase activate icon. Alright, I guess we forgot to put knights in our deck. So the thing I mentioned with Sir Gwyn really wanting us to already have some knights and equipment in play means we would really like to find a knight here. Well, that's a soldier. But I guess uh, it's not too bad since it's already equipped. So it's going to draw us a card with Sir Gwyn if we can draw land. Probably should... Uh, I guess I'll play the blade and then keep up both cruelty and icon instead of main phasing icon. I think that's reasonable. And then the reclamation, at least the cruelty exiles, so it doesn't uh, let them draw a card. Put on missing red mana, perhaps. Alright, there's a red mana. Alright, found some knights. I think I'll take this one. And there's land six. So don't really want to attack into this situation here. Just play veteran. And then I probably want to activate icon before I shuffle, because we know there's a bunch of non-knights at the bottom of our deck. I could of course also cruelty the commander if they play it. Opponent's gonna get to draw a lot of cards here with Reclamation, Korvold. There it is. So do I wanna cruelty it right now maybe? I guess I do. Send it back to the Shadow Realm. And our opponent doesn't get to draw a card. So they probably didn't want to sack that land. They could have sacrificed a creature to still draw with the Reclamation. Alright, so I can play Sir Gwyn. And then put the lands on... I guess that doesn't even work, because this is a soldier. So it's just the veteran attacking, I get to draw a card, they block, I lose a veteran, and 
They get to draw a card from the Reclamation, it's not great. What's the alternative here? Playing like a Sheevan Dragon? Yeah, I think so. We'll need to find some evasion, so we don't have to go face first into this Moldervine Reclamation every time. Opponent sacrificing the caves, so... They're getting further and further away from replaying their Corvold. Costs two additional mana for each time it goes back to the command zone, essentially. So now it's costing them seven instead of five. Ooh, Krenko. Could be scary. New animation. Haven't seen it before. Alright, that could be a good addition. I guess I could play Sir Gwyn and move the blade to the dragon, attack and draw a card. I guess that's reasonable too. I guess I'll try that. Ooh, cool animation. And I guess I should put this on a knight. But I don't think I want to trade veteran for enforcer here. Alright. And should I move anything? I think we're fine. So we gotta try and leverage Sheevan Dragon here. Hopefully the dragon survives. This is a human, the rest are not. Alright, so doesn't do a whole lot at the moment, but could be powerful later. We only get to draw one card. It's not that if we put more equipment on a dragon we get to draw multiple cards here. So I could start doing some damage with the dragon fire breathing here. Definitely want to keep up at least intervention. So let's attack, see what we draw. Alright, another flyer, that's good. I guess I'll only pump once. Since I want to play Vanguard and keep up uh, my other Red Instance. And I don't think I can afford to play the Mace. I could move some equipment, I guess. But it's nice to have a 5-5 five, five to block the 4-5. I think I can stay put. Oh, I guess I should keep a Resurgence in mind for next turn. Don't think we would have had lethal uh, last turn, but maybe this upcoming turn we can make it happen. And Druid puts counter on Krenko. Should I kill Krenko here? Or do we not care if they attack? I don't think we care if they attack. That seems fine. Do I need to block with more? They get to draw from Reclamation. Opponent passes. So I guess I'll Icon then. Find a hasty Legionnaire. Alright, so I can play Legionnaire and Resurgence. Opponent might be holding on to removal spell for the Sheevan Dragon, so do I have lethal if they kill the dragon here? I get to move a bunch of equipment to the Vanguard as well, so I think I go for it. I can move this over here. Alright, opponent packs it in. I guess that's true, the Vanguard would make the opponent gain a bit of life if we tank with it, because they can trade off their Goblin tokens or whatever for our uh, Soldier tokens that are attacking, but we should have still had plenty. Alright, sweet, so... What did we get? A bunch of Heraldic Banners. Chandra's Outrage from the Battle Pass. Alright, so... First game went pretty well. 
All right, what about this one? No red mana. We do have a Corpse Knight we can cast. I think I'll take my free Mulligan here. Well, this isn't much better. I guess I can cast my Crystal Slipper. No black mana, only two lands. I think we're going to six. Mm, this mana situation is pretty painful. I guess I'll keep. Don't really want to play this as a 1-1 one -one death touch. I kind of want to draw my card first. Although we have a bunch of three mana things to do with our mana as well. Nah, yeah, I'll play it slow. Alright, I guess we'll play this as a creature. So we're facing the fairy deck, 4 mana, 2, 3, flying, death touch and lifelink. Auto flyers gets plus 1 plus 0. And when they cast an artifact or enchantment, they get to make a fairy token. Alright, pretty strong. So next turn we can play Icon, or we can draw a card with the Knight. Opponent with the Banner. So this can ramp, as well as pump creatures of the Chosen Color Command Tower. So we're getting close to casting uh, Sir Gwyn here, although we're missing the equipment part. I think I'll just draw my card and then play this out as a creature for now. And then next turn we can I can All right. Ooh. It's a cool animation too. So they've got this in play, getting pumped by the banner. So three three flying death touch and lifelink. We're a bit short on removal here, but I do have a mask of immolation to maybe finish it off. So let's Attack. I guess I could have just played Icon anyway. But I kind of want them to block, not knowing that they're going to lose their creature here. So that works. So that dies, and then I could move this, I guess that makes sense. Could have also kept up Shining Armor to maybe protect my Midnight Reaper, but we'll try this. Oh yeah, that's right, Mask plus a Death Toucher can kill anything, since it's the creature itself dealing the damage, unlike a Heart Piercer Bow in M20 Draft. So yeah, Knight plus Mask can kill anything. I replace their commander. So what I want to do here is draw lands. That's untapped, preferably. Mm, well, Guildgate's tapped. Otherwise, what I've, I could have done is play Sir Gwyn, attack, and then before blockers, sacrifice a Knight to Alela, and then still get to draw my card from Sir Gwyn. I could still just kill their commander. And then see what I draw. All right, time for Icon. Yeah, let's attack and then Am I better off keeping up Shining Armor or equipping the Mask? Probably equip the Mask in case you have some like Exile based removal spell. Ooh, Golden Egg, so that's also a new card here. 
enters the battlefield, draw a card, they can filter mana and they can gain three. And I, I think I want to attack first before playing Evolving Wilds. Reason to play it first on Sacrifice is to thin out the deck. But reason to wait is in case I draw a plane so I get to play the Knight. And then end of turn we'll sacrifice this. I guess I maybe should have moved this to my Sir Gwyn, since they're more likely to kill Sir Gwyn than they are the Midnight Reaper. Yeah, I probably should have moved the Mask to get that one extra damage. They're animating their golden egg. That's scary. But we're getting in range where the Bond of Discipline can just win us a game here. So hopefully no removal. No Conclave Tribunal. So yeah, I should have gotten in one extra damage here. Send that to the command zone. So I could recast her Gwyn if I want to, 8 mana. It's probably still the best uh, play we have. Put them to 7 and then next turn try to bond. And this time I'll make sure to move the mask. Oh, that's a bummer. Let's send that to the command zone. There's something to be set to let it go to the graveyard since we picked up the knight's charge. But we're not too far from just replaying Sir Gwyn. Huh, so I guess if we send Sir Gwyn to the command zone, I guess it doesn't technically die since dying is going to the graveyard, so we didn't get to draw a card from the Midnight Reaper in that spot. So yeah, that's a good interaction to know about here. I'm not used to all these commander-specific interactions. And our opponent got an animating fairy that gets pumped by the banner. Gotta try and rebuild the board here to try and get in lethal. So I guess the sequence here is knights. Also, we sadly picked up the Mortify later, otherwise I could have just uh, dealt with the Conclave Tribunal. Then I can drain them. Um, probably still want to play this now. And move the mask. Alright. So we're set up for lethal next turn with the Bond of Discipline. So if they just replay their commander here, they might feel safe, but uh, then we hit them with the Bond of Discipline. It's going to be a Guild Globe instead. Haven't really had time to activate Ike in this game since we've just been replaying our commander over and over. Ooh, Sephara. Well. Finally gonna get to see Bond of Discipline win a game. That also would have worked. But this gets more style points. All right, so Mardu, two wins in a row here. Unlocked Sir Conrad. 
All right, let's switch it up. I'm just gonna go in order here. So next up is Savage Hunter. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.